Uh, thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. And uh, you already uh, set the ball rolling by uh, defining hypoglycemia and the various complications associated with it. So my task will be limited to uh, define what is hypoglycemic unawareness or hypoglycemia unawareness and how do we treat and manage this condition. So as uh, one of the uh, definition you saw, there was a term called asymptomatic hypoglycemia. So asymptomatic hypoglycemia is something that the patient is having blood sugar levels, which is below 70 milligram per deciliter, but the patient is not experiencing any sign and symptoms of the hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia, so this may be a lead to all of us that this patient may actually be having hypoglycemic unawareness also. So any hypoglycemic unawareness is defined as onset of neuroglycopenia before the appearance of the autonomic warning symptoms. We, say, we saw that there were two categories of symptom, neurogenic and neuroglycopenic symptoms. So once the hypoglycemia sets in, the patient does not get warning signs and immediately lands up into the second phase of symptoms that is the neuroglycopenic symptoms. So this can be a major challenge when achieving the tight diabetes control, and this can actually lead to redu reduction in the quality of life. We all know that in type 1 diabetes patient, the hypoglycemic unawareness occurs very frequently, but recently it has been also found that with the use of sensors like CGM, the type 2 diabetic patient, they will also experience hypoglycemic unawareness, though lesser percentage of them. And the presence of HU, that is a hypoglycemic unawareness, increases the risk of severe hypo, uh, hypoglycemia, and this risk is manifolds for type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetic patient. So who, who is more likely to develop uh, HU or the hypoglycemic unawareness? Anyone who is having a long-standing diabetes, there is a history of recurrent hypoglycemic episodes, Patients who are on intensive glycemic therapy, those who are taking insulin or multiple daily insulin injections, as well as they are also taking sulfonylureas, along with other medications, they are more likely to experience hypoglycemia. And etiology of this HU can be multifactorial, and the possible mechanisms can, uh, are chronic exposure to the low blood glucose, antecedent hypoglycemia, recurrent severe hypoglycemia, and there is failure of counter-regulatory hormones. So uh, there is data from uh, many epidemiological studies which suggest that certain factors like uh, 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 tight HbA1 intensive insulin therapy, HbA1c, can be a predictor of hypoglycemic awareness in men. But there are certain other factors like QTC interval and hypertension which increases the risk of hypoglycemia in women. So women are more susceptible to develop HU than the male patients. Uh, the last point in this slide is just to explain that sometimes there can be genetic variations also and some people may be more predisposed to HU simply because they have certain genetic uh, mutations or the modifications. If you look at the uh, HU, uh, you will regard it as a maladaptive as well as the adaptive response. Why adaptive? Because when the gl glucose levels are falling down, the brain is trying to be energetic and active and trying uh, to protect the individual. But at the same time, it is more adaptive because the warning signs are gone. So since, since the, some patient is not getting the warning sign, they can uh, land up in immediate emergency. So the time necessary for complete cognitive recovery, these are certain evidences which have shown that those who have HU, they take less time to complete recovery after restoration of the normoglycemia. Also, in animal studies, it has been uh, seen that the recurrent moderate hypoglycemia had less brain cell death and less mortality during or following mild hypoglycemia than those without recurrent hypoglycemia. However, hypoglycemia associated autonomic failure, that is the failure of counter -reg regulatory uh, uh, hormones to act, is without any doubt a maladaptive response. If we consider uh, that uh, defective glucose counter regulation at HU risk the rise, uh, risk, increases the risk of severe hypoglycemia with increased morbidity. Uh, morbidity and mortality. So this is a simple slide which will show you uh, what are the adaptive mechanisms which comes in. Whenever a patient experiences hypoglycemia, you will find that the first steps which happens is that there is a decrease in insulin secretion. This, uh, this phase is compromised in patients with type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Then the second response which occurs is there is an increase in glucagon secretion. This is again impaired in patients with type 2 diabetes. And the third thing is that there is an increase in catecholamine release and the patient then develops hypoglycemic symptoms. So what happens uh, because of the recurrent hypoglycemia, the, uh, all these four steps are compromised and the patient loses the counter-regulatory mechanisms and this actually leads to hypoglycemic unawareness. So this is again the slide which is depicting uh, the various mechanisms, how it can happen. It is important to understand that there are various theories uh, or hypotheses which have been proposed for the hypoglycemic unawareness and I will be taking uh, four most common theories into account. 
what is happening is that the blood glucose levels are falling, but at the same time, the brain is able to keep itself energetic and the patient is not developing symptoms. So there is a change in the brain glucose transport or the glucose metabolism. So this hypothesis says that there is an increase in the normalized, what MRI scans have shown that there is an increase in the normalized FDG uptake in certain areas of the brain, including the left amygdala and the bilateral ventral striatum in response to the hypoglycemia. And in patients with HU, the uptake in these brains region uh, falls significantly. Also, there are certain reduced responses which are seen in uh, patients with HU. And during recurrent hypoglycemia, cerebral blood flow also reduces significantly <coughs> in the thalamus and the hypothalamus compared to the healthy control. So all these changes, they suggest that there is a reduced neural activation in the, these brain regions that participate in glucose sensing or coordination of the counter-regulator response. So this is one hypothesis which says that altered metabolism allows the brain to be energetic at that point of time. These are uh, a simple slide which shows that these uh, changes may be occurring at the level of the neurons and leading to reduced responsiveness to the hypoglycemia. This is again another theory which says that the brain uh, glycogen supercompensation uh, hypothesis, it says that following an attack of hypoglycemia, the glycogen concentration in the brain increases. So this glycogen is able to keep the brain more active uh, during even when the systemic hypoglycemia is happening. But important question is that whether this can lead to any therapeutic intervention for the management of hypoglycemic unawareness. This is again the brain fuel hypothesis. So whenever the systemic hypoglycemia is happening, the brain switches to an alternate fuel. For example, uh, 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 the fuels like lactate or ketones may be utilized by brains at that point of time. And so there is an increase, of, uh, increase in the blood-brain barrier, monocarboxylic acid transport. So these may be the mechanism where the brain shifts to the alternative fuel. And when the blood glucose levels are falling, still the brain is able to keep them itself active. And this is again the brain neural communication hypothesis, which says that the GABA level in ventromedial hypothalamus interstitial fluids are decreased during acute hypoglycemia. But when the acute hypoglycemia is occurring repeatedly, then these levels are actually increased in the brain area. So whenever the hypoglycemia happens, the neuronal networks, they don't realize, recognize the hypoglycemia happening systematically. And the patient will actually be landing immediately into more severe symptoms. So what are the consequences of the hypoglycemia? We know that there is a greater risk of severe hypoglycemia up to sixfold with its ante uh, antecedent uh, attendant morbidity. The severe form of morbidity includes seizures, coma, fractures, joint dislocation, and patient can actually end up with cardiac arrhythmias. And there are certain trials which have shown that intensive glycemic control can lead to HU, and this can be a detrimental factor for the glycemic control. Especially in the elderly patient, it has been seen that the aging itself modifies the cognitive and the symptomatic and the counter-regulatory mechanisms. And the older adults with diabetes, they are at much higher risk for the geriatric syndrome, which includes falls, incontinence, frailty, cognitive impairment, and depressive symptoms. And even few episodes of hypoglycemia, as many as three, there are certain studies which have shown that can lead to onset of the dementia in these patients. And also, uh, there is cognitive impairment. So severe hypoglycemia and hypoglycemic unaware awareness in older people with diabetes may be associated with cognitive decline. So this is one of the serious consequences. As also pointed out by Anush sir, that uh, the consequences of hypoglycemia are many and they, it can impact uh, quality of life as well as it can have social impact in the family members. And important thing is to understand that many countries they require documentation that severe hypoglycemia and HU is not occurring before pers in persons before they are permitted to ge uh, get any driving license. So in certain countries it is very mandatory for the diabetic patients to document that uh, hypoglycemia is not happening. Also, it can, uh, multiple other parameters, quality of life parameters are also compromised. So that brings to the last part of my topic, how do we prevent and manage uh, hypoglycemic unawareness? So the goal is to complete avoidance of hypoglycemia, which is very difficult to achieve. The tools which are avail uh, available is that blood glucose monitoring and uh, individualized targets and educational programs for the patients are the key in uh, prevention and the management of the hypoglycemic awareness. We know that blood, uh, blood glucose monitoring, uh, now we have tools like continuous glu uh, glucose monitoring systems which can detect hypoglycemia at a, uh, uh, in a very uh, more uh, uh, robust way and we can uh, find out the patients who may actually be having HU. Also, 
uh, we need to have individualized uh, targets for the patients and we should relax the targets but it is uh, uh, hypoglycemia does not mean that we allow the patient to have very high HbA1c level so sometimes we need to modify the goals as per the patient's own comorbidities and the age and the other factors but it has been seen that when we try to achieve a very tight glycemic control by less than 7 and we go up to 6 then the risk of hypoglycemia increases so to avoid the microvascular complication we need to keep below 7 but to avoid the risk of severe hypoglycemia and HU we need to keep the HbA1c level above 6 also. So uh, the target range should be varying between 6 to 7 and more close to 7 if possible. Educational programs are very, very important. It, it has been seen that the patients who are well educated and those who are able to identify hypoglycemia early, early warning signs, they may be able to prevent it. And it is important to uh, tell them how to correct the hypoglycemia by eating right at the right time, using the regular snacks, and correcting hypoglycemia whenever it is required. So diabetes self-management and education can have a physical and psychological benefits, and it can result in behavior changes with positive influence in the outcome. So uh, the treatment options for the management of hypoglycemia uh, venous and mechanism of action, we know that uh, those, these, uh, some of these are, can be done, some of these cannot be done. Optimizing insulin treatments, if somebody is on insulin, we would like to uh, change the insulin uh, regime and we would try to see that the patient does not have hypoglycemia. If somebody is on also having sulfonylureas or the other combinations which can lead to hypoglycemia, then probably a review of ther therapy is required. Certain other therapies like use of beta-2 adrenergic agents can enhance uh, adrenal adrenaline effect but is not uh, routinely used. Use of uh, methylxanthine derivatives like caffeine and theophylline, they can lead to CNS stimulation but is not, uh, these are all experimental therapies. Use of serotonin reuptake inhibitors, fluoxetine, sertraline, paroxetine or in, uh, they're all Again, investigational therapy. So uh, modulation of hypoglycemic sensing by uh, potassium ATP channels modulators, other treatment, islet cell transplantation, fructose. So these are all investigational, but clinically none of them is available. So the two important thing is that we need to educate the patient. We need to identify the hypoglycemia. And we need to uh, modify the therapy at the same time keeping in mind that the HbA1c does not slip. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude by saying that HU is a complex and difficult to study phenomena, and it has greater risk to the patients. And it is common in patients with type 1 diabetes as well as it is seen in type 2 diabetes patients also. And there are numerous research studies which have begun to uncover the mechanisms by which the CNS responds and adapts to hypoglycemia. And until effective measures are developed to reserve, uh, reverse HU, part of the role of the healthcare professional is that to educate people with diabetes and the risk which are associated with HU. You. And it is important to discuss hypoglycemia prevention strategies with patients, so don't be scared by, uh, in discussing hypoglycemia, so that achieving their glucose control as well as at the same time minimizing the morbidity and mortality associated with hypoglycemia. So thank you, thank you very much, and thank you, sir, for inviting to this beautiful campus. Thank you.